Well, what's going on guys and well, welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua daniel george a social media marketer and online coach and in today's video i want to discuss why you need to build a team around your social media marketing agency no i don't waste no time Okay guys and welcome back to the video. So like I said in the introduction, today I want to talk about why you should build a team around your SMMA business or your social media agency business. And I've recorded a video very similar to this a while back. Um, I think it was from like two, three years ago now. Um, I've been recording videos for the last uh, four years which are all you know SMMA related. So you know if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, uh, make sure you check it out, you know, see what kind of free value and free knowledge I'm uh, providing you guys with on this channel and then consider subscribing. But uh, like I said, the video that I'm basically about to record again now is something that I've already recorded and uploaded uh, two, three years ago. However, my perception at the time about outsourcing and uh, building a team around your agency is very, very different to what it is today. And around the time that I recorded and uploaded that previous video, I was very much under the influence of the uh, book, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. Now this book um, has had a lasting impact on me and it's literally changed my entire outlook on uh, business and entrepreneurship in general. And that was because uh, prior to reading that book, I thought uh, that I basically had to do everything myself um, that I had to be this one-man band, I had to be an expert at every single aspect of the business, whether that is finance, whether that is sales, whether that is marketing, whether that is operations, I needed to be the expert and I needed to be the smartest person in my business. Then, when I read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, I realized that actually eliminating myself from the process and eliminating, eliminating myself as a bottleneck from the business actually will you know, make your business propel uh, forwards and will actually you know, be, uh, allow you to scale your business without you know, basically uh, grinding your gears and working yourself into the ground. So what Tim Ferriss really explains in his book is basically how you can earn more money by working less. And that is in the least you know, scammy way possible. He's not uh, talking about you know, charging extortionate prices and then not you know, fulfilling uh, the service that you are providing. He's actually shown you in this book how you can put systems in place to automate and or delegate um, you know, various aspects of your online business. So I started applying that to my own agency as well. And um, you know, for those of you that are not familiar with the four pillars of SMA, uh, they basically are outreach, which you know, is basically reaching out to potential customers. Sales is basically you know, coming to an agreement with those potential customers and actually getting them on as a client. Then we have project management where we literally manage the clients. You know, we, we make sure that uh, the communication processes are set in place, the client is happy, um, everything we need uh, you know, is something that we have and everything is onboarded. And then we've also got the project development pillar, which we basically use to actually get results for our clients. So that is literally you know, going out and uh, fulfilling your service, if you will. So with those four pillars in mind, I looked at my agency back then and I thought, okay, how can I remove myself just entirely, regardless of quality, regardless of um, you know anything to do with the fulfillment part of it, I just want it, every aspect outsourced um, to the point where I literally no longer followed the, the four hour work week model because all I wanted to do was basically outsource for as cheap as possible so that my profit margin is as high as possible. And this is something that yes, you know, Tim Ferriss does actually uh, promote and advise, but obviously that shouldn't make your service suffer. And in my case, that actually did. So when I looked at outreach, I thought to myself, okay, what can I do to basically remove myself from the outreach? How can I make sure that I no longer need to do outreach? and I outsourced that. Then I did the same thing for sales and I also did the same thing for Facebook ads, which is a service that our agency provides. So I tried to find media buyers that were not necessarily as good or I wasn't looking for the cream of the crop, the best of the best. I was looking for cheap and cheerful. So if our retainer was a thousand pounds a month or a thousand euros a month, then I tried to basically find a outsourcer that was less than 20% of that retainer, 20, 30% of that retainer. And what I noticed was because I was doing it in this way, 
that the services basically you know the, the service on my end just wasn't of a high enough quality and our clients were leaving so the lifetime value for my clients at the time um, so basically you know when I was in full outsource mode was around three to four months so a client will come in we would onboard them they would be happy with our sort of you know our outreach and the quality that we uh, or the perception of quality that we provided when on the sales call but then from that moment onwards the service delivery just wasn't there because our media buyers you know were overworked you know we literally just gave them all of our clients because you know they were cheap and cheerful um, there was no real system in place i had no idea if our media buyers were actually getting good results or not because i had no expertise on that whole um, part of the business because again i understood or i thought i understood what tim ferris was trying to say about you not necessarily having to be the expert in every single aspect of the business just outsource it to an expert that is however the big issue with that is that if you do not understand facebook ads or if you do not understand the fulfillment part of the service that you are delivering that you don't actually know if your media buyer is actually doing a good job so back then i basically realized that okay i can't i can no longer you know keep doing this in this way because every single time i lose a client i need to go back out there in the trenches and find myself a new client and in the end it's just this vicious cycle of getting a client losing a client getting a client losing clients and that is basically what i wanted to prevent so what i then did was i basically um, started to be focusing much more on the back end because out of the four pillars for me project development is the pillar that i do enjoy most so if you know going to my head moments i had to choose a pillar to focus on and come back into the business and work in the business then it would be project development so basically getting the results for the clients um, outreach is still completely outsourced and is automated the sales is also automated and outsourced and then the project management is just outsourced and it's hard to automate communication um, and then the project development is manually done by me and I've over time I've slowly become an expert at Facebook ads at um, you know paid traffic at sales funnels etc so I very very much enjoy doing that and that is for now basically the only part of the business that i still manually do communication is not entirely outsourced um, i do you know speak to my clients make sure that they're happy but in terms of like the report and the loom updates etc you know that is all outsourced so when you want to basically you know start setting this up for yourself or when you want to start looking to build a team around your own agency the first piece of advice that was applicable then and still applicable now is to look at your business and think to yourself what am i currently doing that a robot could potentially take over you know you don't need to have the answer right away but just look at your business in terms of processes and systems and think to yourself am i doing something that a robot can do so for example look at your outreach you know uh, let's say you're sending cold emails is there a software that can automate that you know is there a software that can automate the follow-up is there a software that can provide you with the email addresses and so on and so forth? Maybe there isn't, well then can you outsource it? So the order in which I would look at things is ask yourself, can I automate it? If not, can I delegate it? And if you can't do that, then can you eliminate it? Because it might also be that that whole process is just not relevant. For example, in terms of our reporting, we've actually eliminated most of the sort of the reporting. We used to send like entire PDFs of statistics, etc. Um, and then we asked ourselves, okay, is there a way to automate the reporting and send the report like via some kind of software? Uh, that wasn't the case. Obviously, you can get templates from software. But in terms of sending automatic reporting, that was not possible. Then I asked myself, okay, well, is there a way to outsource this? There is in a way, but I'm the only one that understands the metrics as you know as well as as well as I can. And if you just get a virtual assistant to look at the metrics, yes, you know I can basically provide the virtual assistant with information. But still, you know, there's a lot of time on my end needed to uh, to basically outsource that properly so that the client does get a report that makes sense with the metrics that I want the client to see. Um, so then I looked at the process and thought, okay, can I eliminate this? And it turns out that in terms of the reporting, all the client actually wants is to know, okay, how much money is coming in? How much money is going out? So how much is it costing me to get a purchase? How many purchases am I getting? Am I getting a return on investment and a return on ad spend? And then I realized that, okay, that could easily be done via a Loom video. So no longer do we send these you know, PDF reports and stuff like that with all these statistics. 
I just record myself in a loom. And again, you know, this is something that is outsourced. Um, so we record ourselves in a loom. We open the business manager. We show them, okay, this is how much money you're spending. This is the purchase conversion value. This is the return on ad spend. This is how much money you made this month. Then I basically explain how we did it and explain the next steps. So no metrics, no cost per click, no click-through rates, anything like that, because at the end of the day, the client doesn't really care. All the client cares about is how much money am I making you know, for the business and what is the return on investment, okay? So first piece of advice is don't do anything that a robot can do. Then second piece of advice, I've already mentioned it briefly before, but look at your business in terms of systems and processes. So everything you do in your business can be made into a process or a system. So for example, let's say you are building a, a landing page for a client. Then step one is you open ClickFunnels. Step two is you click on a landing page. Step three, you create the landing page. Step four, you, you make a button and so on and so forth, okay? Make that into a system and process. You know, you can literally map it out as a standard operating procedure, anything like that. Just for yourself, make it a system and then look at that system and think to yourself, how can I optimize it? How can I remove any kind of delay? You know, maybe um, you notice that halfway through building that funnel, you notice that the client needs to provide you with a certain logo then make sure that you get that logo before you start with the funnel because otherwise halfway through that funnel, you need to email the client, wait for the client to reply. He, he sends over the image, it's a JPEG, it's not a PNG. You need to basically you know, go into Photoshop, remove the background and so on and so forth. So make sure that in your onboarding process, you ask for, in this case, the logo in PNG format so you can quickly upload it to the funnel. And obviously that is a very silly example, but that is how I want you to look at all these systems. So second tip I can give you in terms of building a team around your agency is look at things in processes and systems. And then from there, when you look at it in terms of process and systems, you can go back to tip one and ask yourself, okay, can a robot do this, what I am currently doing? Can I outsource it, yes or no? Can I automate it, yes or no? Can I delegate it or eliminate it, yes or no? Okay, and then in terms of the third tip I'd like to give you in terms of building a team around your agency, and that is to ensure that the quality is still there. So do not make the same mistake that I did and trying to outsource it for as cheap as possible and um, you know to basically keep the profit margin as high as possible because yes, you know, in the short term, you'll be taking home a larger pay cut, but in the long term, the client will leave you uh, quicker or sooner rather than later. So if you take, let's say 80% of the pay cut now, but the client leaves after two months, you know, yes, in the short term, you'll earn a lot of money, but imagine if rather than taking 80% of the pay cut, you only took, let's say 50% of the pay cut and you actually got a high quality media buyer or high quality funnel builder on your team and that client stays for 10 months, then in the long term, you actually earn more money. And you need to think to yourself, why would a client leave your agency? More often than not, the client will only leave if the results are not there. And how can you ensure that the results are there is by providing a high quality service. So if you can get the client a return on investment or a return on ad spend, then why would the client leave you? Well, you, you need to do something really bad or, you know, really discriminating for the client to leave you if you are getting good results. Of course, there are always situations where maybe the client wants to move it in house. Maybe there's a media buyer that can basically get the same results for cheaper and so on and so forth. You know, we, we you can never anticipate everything that is going to happen, but just make sure that in terms of the results and the quality that you are delivering to your clients, that the quality is high and that despite the fact that you might build a team around the service delivery, that the quality is still there. And then the last tip I do wanna to give to you guys and that is to keep your pipeline full. And what I mean by that is, again, looking back at the four pillars, um, when I started to really focus on the service delivery part and the Facebook ads part of it, I noticed that, okay, I'm spending all this time trying to get the best results possible for my clients but I'm no longer looking for more clients. And that is also an issue that I had right back at the start. I had two social media management clients on and I spent all this time manually creating the posts, manually creating all of the Instagram stories, etc., scheduling all these posts, um, posting them on all of the socials, on Facebook and Instagram, etc. I spent so much time on those two clients that I actually was more of a freelancer or a virtual assistant for these clients rather than the agency owner that is basically you know taking them on and onboarding them and uh, providing a service and what i noticed is because i'm spending so much time on these two clients 
I didn't have time to actually reach out to more businesses and get more businesses in. And again, this is also something that I noticed the sort of second time round when I focused very much on the service delivery, which um, back then and still is, you know, Facebook ads, that because I was trying to get the best results possible for my clients, I wasn't getting any new clients in. So even though the back door was shut, which means that the clients didn't leave because the results were there, there was no more clients coming in and you basically plateau in terms of the agency. You know, your clients don't leave, but no more clients come in. You know, you're sort of in limbo, you, you almost hit a glass ceiling, right? And that is when I realized, okay, if I want to focus on the back end, I need to automate and or outsource the front end. And that is when I basically set up the hybrid outreach system. That is when I got my cousin on board, um, who is basically now my head of operations and oversees the entire agency as well. And that is when everything started going more smoother because despite the fact that, yes, I was very much focused on the fulfillment, the pipeline was still full and was still getting more and more clients in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yes, this sounds great, but first of all, how do we build a team, etc.? You haven't discussed anything like that. You've just told your little story and you know, you've given us some vague examples, but other than that, you haven't given us any specific advice. So in terms of advice and how you can do this for yourself, First, you need to find a place where you can find those outsourcers and then obviously you need to figure out for yourself what part of the agency you want to outsource. And literally everything you can think of, every process that you are currently doing in your business can be outsourced. And that is another sort of misconception that I had right back at the start. I thought that I was the one that had to do all of this and no one else could do it better than, than I could. And I quickly realized that there are much better graphic designers out there, there are far better media buyers out there, there are um, far better you know, sales people out there, there are people that can do outreach twice as quickly as I can and so on and so forth. So yes, it's very tempting to go for cheap and cheerful, but there is a very high quality you know, media buyer out there that could be a perfect fit for you if you're willing to basically you know, open up to that and open your eyes to the fact that yes, you know, the quality can be there, um, and yes, you might need to take a larger pay cut, you know, for this media buyer to come on, but if that ensures the client for a longer time, you know, that the client stays for a longer period of time, then that is a good decision to make in my opinion. So where can you find these people to build a team around your agency? Um, the first place I would probably look is Facebook groups. And there's a little tip that I do want to give you about Facebook groups is don't go for the entrepreneurial Facebook groups because we don't really want another entrepreneur in the agency. We want someone that is more than happy being the number two. Um, and isn't likely to just look at our business model, take it and try and build it all himself, okay? We need someone that is willing to work in a team. So Facebook groups is a very good place to start. Um, you know, you'll get a lot of high quality um, appointment setters, high quality salespeople, high quality media buyers in those Facebook groups. You just need to know where to look and you need to build up that relationship first and make sure that that person doesn't necessarily have the same entrepreneurial tendencies as you do. Second place you can look is just literally within your own network on Instagram. You can put up an Instagram story and just say, hey, listen, I'm uh, working on this agency business right now and I basically need a graphic designer or an appointment setter. You know, this is what I can offer. DM, slide in the DMs if you are interested. Third place and probably the most common place is uh, freelancer websites. So upwork.com, fiverr.com, uh, peoplebattle.com and so on and so forth. And again, just just my two cents here, make sure that you do go for quality rather than just go for cheap and cheerful. You can find cheap outsourcers that can provide a good service, but you do need to be very, very critical of who you're taking on and make sure that you do ask for like portfolio material, you get them on a call, you really do qualify the business or the person, not the business, the person, and make sure that you can see what he can actually do rather than you know he just sending you some screenshots and say yes this is something that i can do so actually get this person on a call be skeptical show them the business manager and say okay what would you do in this situation and so on and so forth and then lastly you can also look on linkedin and the great thing about linkedin is the fact that you can literally search by job title and yes you know some people will be already working for a business but there are a lot of people out there that do actually want to work for a startup or work from home. You know, there are so many perks to working for an agency, um, especially nowadays, you know, you can just work from your laptop. As long as you have Wi-Fi, you are good to go. So LinkedIn is another place that you can also find um, anyone that can basically take over a certain aspect of your agency business. Okay, and then lastly, before we wrap up this video, how or what aspects of the business do I recommend you outsource? Well, for me, the uh, Facebook ads, so the fulfillment and the development, um, part is just done by me. 
Um, what I have outsourced is the outreach. So basically, you know, getting um, clients in or getting calls in, you know, with potential clients. So, you know, the reaching out, the initial contact point, getting them to fill out that calendar link, um, anything like that is outsourced. Um, then the sales part is also outsourced. And when I mean, what I mean by outsourcing, not necessarily someone in a third world country that's taking those calls. No, we've actually got, you know, I've actually got a full-time employee doing this. But in your case, you know, you can still outsource this. You can outsource the appointment setter um, and get them to work on a commission. So if the appointments actually become clients, you give that person 10 or 20% of the retainer. That could be recurring or could be one off fee. That is completely up to you. Then the sales, again, can be done by a sales team. You, know, you, you can hire someone which will, you know, that person will also get part of the retainer, either a high upfront fee, so maybe like 40%, one time or 10% recurring for every month that that client stays with you and so on and so forth. Then project management, what you can do is hire a assistant that um, basically does all the communication with you and the client, make sure that the client gets replied to on time, etc. Also checks, um, I don't know, whatever you're using, the Slack channel and so on and so forth. And then of course, the project developments, you can hire a media buyer, you can hire a graphic designer and all these people are, like I said, available in Facebook groups, Instagram um, DMs, um, freelancer websites, LinkedIn, you name it, you know, you can definitely find them if you look uh, hard enough and make sure that you qualify these people, you know, to the best of your abilities. But anyway, that is all I've got for today. Hope you got some out of this video. If you like this video, please leave this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more if you like content like this. Also, if you want, you can leave a comment down below with anything that you'd like to see from this channel next. Um, I'm basically coming to the end of my content plan that I've created for me. Um, there's a few more videos that I do definitely want to put out there and that are already on the calendar and set in motion. A few watch me build videos because I know that you guys do love those. You've also got the housewarming video coming very, very soon. You've got um, a few more like live type videos, do Q and A's, etc. So a lot more, lot more content coming your way. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.